guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in video games. So as you may have heard, Dr. Mario World just recently slid onto mobile platforms, seemingly out of nowhere, to a fairly lukewarm reception from fans of the series. Man, whatever med school they have in the Mushroom Kingdom has some pretty low standards. I mean, come on, they're handing out PhDs to child Koopas and tax evading dinosaurs with a vocabulary limited to only their name. Yuffie. Anyways, I've wanted to cover the Dr. Mario series here on Lost Bits for a while now, so with this game released, now is a good a time as ever. So sit back, relax, slap the like button if at any point you do enjoy this video, and throw back some pills. Wait, no, don't, don't do that last one. It's time to find some Lost Bits. So, what games in the series will I be covering in this video, you might be wondering? Well, a few actually. Basically, any Dr. Mario game that has anything worthwhile to talk about. So if it isn't here, like Dr. Green Mario, there's nothing of value that's unused to discuss. Alright, let's just first start off with the newly released Dr. Mario World, since it's hot off the grill and already been data mined by some epic gamers. I thought the PhD problem in the Mushroom Kingdom was bad enough already, but this data mined picture here seems to confirm that it's even worse. We got Dr. Wario and Dr. Waluigi, okay that's kinda cool actually, Dr. DK confirming that the Donkey Kong Country show is canon, then we have literal babies getting their PhDs. Very cool Nintendo. It's a real shame, these are all going to be basically impossible to get when they're released without shelling out some real world coins. And that's basically all the unused things for Dr. Mario World, at least for now anyway, so let's take things back to a time without microtransactions and keep the original Dr. Mario for the Nintendo Entertainment System. But before we dive into the final release proper, this game actually had a few prototypes that have been discovered. The first set of these are simply known as the Virus 1989 and 1990 prototypes, obviously named after the year of their build date. And yes, before switching the title of the game to Dr. Mario, this game was initially titled Virus, and as you can see it was quite… different. At least visually. While the core gameplay remains relatively the same, Mario's original graphic was changed from this build, and yeah, there's also the scene of some dog or something in a room with what appears to be a nurse holding a bag of ice. Pretty weird. The 1989 prototype is currently the earliest known build to exist of this game, and the 1999 one, while really similar, does have a few improvements like animated viruses. In both builds though, at this point in development, the virus designs that we know from the final release weren't yet created, I suppose. I mean, the sprites of the viruses in the bottle are still there, but they are quite different from what is seen in the final release. These builds also lack most of the audio from the final game, apart from a few sound effects which are just the sounds from Tetris on the NES, but doubled in speed. Oddly enough however, the iconic music tracks from Dr. Mario are still present in the game and can be loaded in by messing around with the game's memory. I guess the developers weren't too focused on sound design at this point. Other scrapped things that didn't make it into the final release include the title screen, options screen with its blue background, the two player game screen, as well as how several text strings were displayed. These builds also have a few things that go unused themselves. These include some unused tiles, as well as a sprite of the doggo being happy, presumably meant to be seen when clearing a level. Since the dog is never seen happy in this build, I guess at the end of the day Dr. Mario just wasn't able to cure the dog after all. Next up is the Play Choice 10 prototype. Now this one wasn't discovered until 2012 in a Play Choice 10 arcade cabinet from which it got its name. These arcade cabinets were apparently used at one point to test various new NES games at select Chuck E. Cheese's restaurants. Anyways, although this build still retains the title Virus from the previous builds, as you can see it's certainly further along in development with its flashier, more stylized logo, and while we still have some differences here and there, the aesthetics and UIs are more similar to that of the final release of the game. In this build, the speed level was known as the Sick level, and just like in Tetris, the music tracks are just labeled as A or B, 
Thankfully, they deservingly gave the tracks the names Fever and Chill in the final release. As far as the gameplay screen goes, the hospital scene with the dog was removed in favor of an oval containing the three viruses. There are also several other gameplay updates in this build, like increasing the score cap from just under 1 million to just under 10 million, but nothing else really too crazy to get into. As far as graphics go, there are still some remnants from the other builds, but we can definitely see that overall this build was a big step in the direction of the final release. Mario Sprite has been changed to look more like the one in the final version, but still it has some differences like his shoes, eyebrows, and hands. The viruses, although again closer to the final release, we still see a few changes in their sprites, most notably with the yellow virus's laugh, but also with the red virus's tail and the blue virus's ear and shoes. Yeah, huge changes, right? And lastly, the clipboard was also altered by a whole 2 pixels in both length and width, basically making it just the Clipboard XL. And just like the previous builds, this one also has some unused graphics. Again, there are the unused tiles from before, a pointer finger, probably meant to be a cursor, a trademark logo, as well as some frames of the viruses laughing at the player for failing to complete a level. This time around, there are also two unused audio tracks that go unused, both of which aren't very uplifting. Here, let me give you guys a quick example of both so you can see what you've been missing. These definitely aren't the best NES tracks that I've heard on the system, to say the least, so I'm not too upset they were cut. Now onto the prototype just known as the April 27th, 1999 prototype. Very creative name this time. This prototype was compiled only three months from the Japanese release of the game, so it's very close to what was seen in the final release, with only a few small changes here and there. Basically, the only differences here are on the main title screen, where only the blue virus is seen on the left, instead of on the right with Mario on the left as we saw in the final release. And also, the Doc himself still retains his alternate, unused appearance. And last is the most up-to-date Dr. Mario prototype, properly known as the Late Prototype. There's not much to say here as it's almost identical to the final release of the game. Basically, the only difference at this point is that Dr. Mario still has a different look than that in the final release. Pretty weird to think that this design was altered within only a month or even less before the game went into the production phase. All in all, from each of these prototypes, it's really cool to see how the game evolved from its early beginnings back when it was titled Virus, to the iconic final version that we all got to play. But wait, we're not done with the NES version just yet. The final release of the game also has a few leftover unused graphics. First up is this thing, which is kinda hard to tell what it is, at least when I look at it. Could be a soccer ball, or a dice block, or a meteorite, who knows, let me know what you guys think it looks like down in the comments. And next is this red door shaped thing, or I guess half of a giant pill. Then there are these sprites for what looks like an explosion of some sort, possibly an unused animation for the viruses being destroyed. And finally is this guy. Don't know if it's a snowman or a clown in boots, but whatever it is, based on its placement in the game's sprite list, it is believed that it may have been meant to be seen in the cutscene for level 20 on high difficulty before the final UFO segment. Now personally, I would have way rather had Plump Boy over here rather than a boring old UFO. And now moving along, next game up is Tetris and Dr. Mario. Is it a Tetris game, or is it a Dr. Mario game? Well, it's both, but here I'll just talk about the Dr. Mario related content and save the other stuff for when or if I ever do a Tetris video, with maybe some overlap here and there. Anywho, first up are a few unused audio tracks. As you can hear, nothing too crazy. 
The game also has an entire options menu that for some reason goes disabled in the final build and therefore goes normally unused. It can be found in a Tetris, Dr. Mario, and a mixed match variety of both styles. In this menu, you can set up the controls, computer difficulty level, as well as perform both sound and input tests, making it, I guess, kind of a debug menu of sorts. That said though, this game does actually have a full debug menu with more features to play around with. And you guys know how much I love playing around with debug menus. Here you can edit how many frames it takes for the pill to fall, the speed of the pills vertically and horizontally, the speed of the pills clearing, and some more small configurations. Oddly, several of the settings, like the three Ray Guy options here, have no known effect though. This debug menu doesn't have as much functionality as some of the other ones we've covered here on Lost Bits, but I guess it's just a Dr. Mario game, I don't know how much more I could expect. Moving along, next up is Dr. Mario 64, which I just learned was never actually released in Japan for the Nintendo 64. It was only made available as a port in a Japanese exclusive title Nintendo Puzzle Collection for the GameCube. It's really weird to see North American exclusive Mario games, so that's pretty slick. Anyway, first up, Dr. Mario 64 has an unused test screen that can be accessed with the use of a cheating device. There's not much here, but what looks like the sky, some clouds, the word test, as well as this guy, which if I recall correctly, I think is also an enemy from Wario Land 3? Okay, so after doing some research and playing the game for more than 10 minutes, yes, the Paragooms are from Wario Land 3, and so are several of the other enemies in this game. Mystery solved. Next is a secret password that can be seen by pressing Z, R, L, and left on the D-pad after winning or losing a game while the menu is up. There is nowhere in the game to enter these passwords, leaving them unused and their purpose ultimately unknown. The way to access this code is pretty similar to the secret code in Mario Kart Double Dash, which was apparently meant to be used to log scores for an online scoreboard. So I can only assume the purpose here was similar, if not the same. Dr. Mario 64 also has a slew of unused text strings. Now I won't go over all of them because most aren't all that interesting, but the highlights include several characters and enemies traditionally seen in the Mushroom Kingdom, such as Peach, Kamek, Piranha Plants, Shy Guys, Koopa Troopas, and more. This strongly suggests that the game may have been planned to, or even originally did have traditional Mario enemies, instead of the ones from Wario Land 3 that we saw in the final release. And lastly for this game, there is yet another debug menu. This time around, several additional parameters can be altered on top of pill speeds and virus difficulty levels such as character stats, how the computer player behaves, and more. Here we can again see the text strings for the Mario franchise characters in Japanese, again only reinforcing that they must have been kept in the game for a while for them to be referenced in a debug menu. Now moving along is Dr. Mario Vitamin Toss. Don't remember this one? Well, it was a promotional Flash game from 2005 that's pretty basic. It's certainly not a main series game and there's not much to cover here, but hey, it's developed and published by Nintendo, so oh well. This game only has two unused placeholder images, the first which just reads Jet Lag, and the second which just reads the next best thing. Introducing! Jet Lag 2. <laughs> no idea why these are here as they make no sense in the context of the game, so I can only assume whoever was developing this game was just experiencing some jet lag and felt the need to immortalize that feeling in this game as a placeholder graphic. And last up is Dr. Mario and Puzzle League for the Game Boy Advance. Again, there's not all too much here. There's unused graphics for a try again message that would have been followed up with answering yes or no, letters for spelling out press any button which was changed to press start in the final release, so really only the letters Y, O, U, B, and N are unused, and finally there are some unused graphics of this guy named Pupuri riding what appears to be a dandelion puff along with some clouds, a more basic drawing of the Pupuri as well as some flowers. This guy was apparently seen in the Japan exclusive Nintendo Puzzle Collection I mentioned earlier, and apparently these graphics were meant to be used for a title screen for this game. And last up here, again everyone's favorite, more unused development text. Now most of them are just test messages, such as, test message, 
but other highlights include and roughly translates to counting. Hey, this is a test message. If you spin, I'll pop out at you. Animation change test. This is something test message data for testing with. This is a test for the conversation switcher. The next page will show some different text. And finally, when this conversation finishes, conversation mode should end. Yeah, I dare you to use that last one as a conversation ender sometime. It will be epic, trust me. And with that concludes this Dr. Mario Lost Bits Gamers, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did, be sure to smash like and let me know what other games you would like to see me cover on Lost Bits in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some more of my Lost Bits by clicking on the card right here. If you want to stay even more up to date with me and support the channel, be sure to subscribe here, check out my merch, as well as swing by my Instagram and other social media things, which are all linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for tuning in and for all of your support, and I will see you in a bit.